Hi there, I'm SR Coder and welcome back to another one of my videos. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to use ML API with the Photon Transport layer. Um, if you want to connect across more than uh, one computer that's not inside the local area, you're going to need a few different features and a few different ways of doing it. Um, inside of the Unity Multiplayer Networking, when you dig into it, it actually recommends that you, um, if you're going to be connecting across other computers or across outside of the local network, that you use the Photon Real-Time Transport layer. But uh, it's a little bit complicated to set up, so I'm just going to do a quick video tutorial to show you how to do that. To get started, I've got this uh, brand new MP project. It's a Unity 2021.1.2 that I'm using currently. Uh, and we're just going to go through all of the different installs from the package manager. So if you go to window and then package manager, and then from here, we're just going to import a few things that uh, are kind of hard to find, but I'm going to put all of the URL links in the description so you'll be able to find them real quickly. And now uh, you will use this as a, a fast reference to get up and running with a Unity setup for ML API using the Photon Transport layer. So we're going to add the first package. So you'll find this um, you'll find this buried away inside of the setup for Unity. So um, if I just do this again, so I'm copied and pasted them. So I've um, add a package from a URL, and uh, this is just the ML API package. Um, and this one will uh, install in a few seconds and that will have you access to all the ML API stuff. So we've got ML API in. The next one we want to do is add the Photon Transport package. So I've, I've included this in the uh, in the uh, description again, but uh, you'll find this one. Again, this one's buried away inside of the um, reference for um, setting up different transports inside of um, inside of the documentation. So this one's just setting up now. When this one comes in, uh, there's a few things that it sets up in this setup wizard. Um, I'm just going to flick through these ones just because um, you can leave this, you can actually skip this ID because we're going to set that up later once we've got everything in. So I'm just going to click skip and then on to next and then we're done and we can close this box and move on to the next installation. And the last thing I'm going to set up is Parallel Sync. Um, this one is uh, completely invaluable when you're um, looking to do multiplayer development because it allows you to make a clone of a project. If you've already, if you've never seen this before, you should absolutely use it. So um, again, it's another package. I'll include this in the link. It's called Parallel Sync um, by Varier Pies. You can find that on GitHub if you want to. And again, I'm just going to install this package. So there's the three things: the Photon. Um, there's ML API, there's the Photon Real-Time Transport layer, and then there's Parallel Sync all set up through the Package Manager. When all these things are set up, what you'll end up with inside of your project is the, um, the Photon folder with a, a Photon app settings um, asset. Inside there is where I expect you to put your app ID, your real-time app ID. Um, there's a few other things like setting the region. So if you're going to have people that you want to share your game with, um, it, by default it tries to find the closest region. It won't always find the same region and they need to be on the same region if they're able to connect. So you can set it to um, a specific region. Mine's is actually um, AU. So I would set that so that I could share this with anyone around me and they'd be able to connect to this same app. Uh, we need to go to Photon um, now, to the Photon Cloud, in order to get your um, app ID. I'll just run through this process now. So if you haven't already created an account with Photon, you can create yourself an account um, and sign into your account and you'll be, uh, you'll be given the opportunity to create new cloud apps. So um, you can see I have a few because I did some pun tutorials before, um, but um, we're going to create a new app uh, just here. Uh, the photon type has to be a photon real time. And uh, then you give your application a name. So I'm just going to call this ML API uh, test two. Test two, I think I've already got a test one. And, uh, and then you click create and it will give you an app ID uh, when this application has been created. You get a limit of um, up to 20 concurrent users for any app. And uh, that's usually going to work pretty well. So the app ID is right here. Um, I'm going to uh, not show you this, but I'm going to click and copy this and we'll paste this into the right place. So when you've um, when you've got your app ID, you just can find this uh, photon app settings and you can just paste it into here. 
and uh, and then you're able to just close that and it will work perfectly fine. We're just going to set up a really simple app and uh, we'll just check that it works and I'll show you the a really simple quick setup to make sure that your photon transport layer is actually working. We'll start by making an empty game object on the scene. Um, I'm going to call this game object um, network manager because it's going to be my network manager. And um, from there, we're just going to add the network manager component into it. Um, you'll see here that this exclamation mark is saying select a transport. And if everything's been set up correctly, when you select a transport, you should be able to find photon real-time transport. Um, what it does is it adds the photon real-time transport component. In here, you can set your own nickname. So I'm going to set, um, set SR Coder. And uh, the room name, um, you can leave this completely blank. There's uh, the way Photon works is there's some rooms where you can have, if you'd have uh, hundreds of connected clients, but you'd have a certain number for each room. Um, if you leave this completely blank, blank, or if you type in just a room name, it'll be your default room name when you connect to things. And you've got up to 20 people at any one time. So you can set this up to 20 if you want to, or you can limit rooms to have certain numbers. There, the transport layer has not really had a lot of uh, love yet, so it's um, it's pretty pretty basic. Uh, but it, hopefully, there should be some sort of um, matchmaking or something that can go on uh, in later versions where you can try and pick a room and it will find a room or create a room for you. And um, that's all available inside Pun right now, but um, not inside this. But let's get started with making the rest of this stuff so we can test it. I'm going to make a player. Um, if you see the network manager, in order to spawn something in so that we know that it works, we'll need a, a default player. So I'm just going to make myself um, an empty game object. I'm going to call this network player. And uh, on my network player, I'm going to do the essential component, which is the network object. Um, the, in order for us to see it, I'm going to add a 3D uh, capsule as the uh, child of that. So I'm just going to call this player mesh and uh, leave it at that. The, uh, this object here is going to be my prefab that I'm going to use. So just to keep things organized, I'll make a nice uh, a folder called prefabs in my, um, in my project and take this network player and just drag it into prefabs. I can delete this from my scene now and I'll just save my scene as well. And now inside the network manager component, we can take this network player and add it as uh, into our list of network prefabs. I'm going to hit plus and then drag that into the slot that's been created for me. And then this default player prefab, I'm going to say yes. So in theory now, we should be able to test this game. If we run the game, um, what we should end up being able to do is um, if we have the network manager selected over here, um, we should be able to scroll down in ML API and hit the start host. And you'll see that we have the the object has been created for us in front, so it looks like everything's going fine. Um, to get more information, just real quick, um, inside the um, ML API, so in Photon um, Transport Layer, what you can do for the network logging is you can actually be a bit more um, verbose, so you can get a bit more information, so you can see what's going on. And this is kind of helpful. If that's been set up exactly like that, and you run it again, just like we did before, what we should get is a little bit more information coming up in the console. So if I select my network manager and I go to start the host, you get a little bit more information coming up about what's going on. So we know that this is all working and it's working fine. Um, I'm going to just create a clone of my project and test with two clients as well, just to be sure. So creating a, pl a clone using Parallelsync is pretty easy. You just go to the clone manager and click create new clone, and then you wait for it to do its magic. When the magic's complete, um, you'll be able to open this new version of the cloned project. It'll be given the uh, the um, a new name, so it'll be uh, underscore clone underscore zero, and it'll have the same name as your project. And when this is up and ready, we'll just uh, create a quick uh, test so we can make sure that we have two objects spawned, one client and one host. So I've got my both my projects um, up and running side by side. And I'm just going to go and open the same scene. So I've got the same scene on each. This one has the network manager on it. Um, once it's all uh, up and running, so I'm making sure everything is saved. I'm just going to run this one and run the left-hand side one as a host. 
and on the right hand side one will try and connect as a client just to make sure that it works. So I'm select the network manager, go down to this very handy start host button and we see that we've got our um, player has spawned in. You can see it up in the um, in the left hand side here we've got network player clone and with uh, this one select the network manager again and I'm going to join as a client and if everything works correctly you should end up with two objects in, on your scene, uh, one client and one host. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, it's been nice and quick and informative and uh, this is a great solution for those people that want to connect outside of the local area network. The pun transport layer should allow that to happen. Obviously the limitation being that you're limited to um, up to 20 people uh, or 20 concurrent connections. But you know, yeah, you don't get anything for free. So if you want more, you're just going to have to pay for it. So um, good luck and thanks for watching.